Hello and welcome to Well, Daria, let me welcome in Sunil Kanoria, Vice Chairman of the Institute of Finance and Mass President at ASOCHAM to understand the impact of COVID-19 on India. Not only India, in fact, it has had global impact on the lives of people, on businesses, on economies. Because overall, if you go to see, we were already somewhere in a recessionary phase and it has come like a black hole. Neil, welcome to the show. My first question coming to you over here is, lives across the globe have changed right now with COVID-19 kicking in. This was something which was not really anticipated. In fact, everyone was talking that, yes, we are probably entering a phase of slowdown, but if things are done right by global economies, we could see some bit of a revival kicking in. What's your view? Well, I think... Uh Every challenge, I look at it as an opportunity also. And I think what has happened over the years, the first time as mankind, we are witnessing this kind of a pandemic, which has impacted the world all across at the same time. I don't recall any time in history when the world has uh, got into such a lockdown anywhere, anytime in the foreseeable future, uh, in the past. So I think... Uh, I look at uh, where we stand today, it has definitely impacted uh, individuals, people uh, on a personal level and the businesses, the economy, at the uh, society and at the economy, at the uh, nation level. So therefore, it's a time when we reboot ourselves. Uh, it's a time when we uh, reconfigure and refigure ourselves, uh, right. find ourselves to balance ourselves this time to balance our mind, body and soul. These are three elements by which uh, uh, human beings are made of. And I think if we are able to do that, we will be able to withstand this pandemic, evolve much more better and stronger uh, going forward. But yes, uh, in the interim, there will be challenges uh, which we are facing. Uh, and I think there, there's only no way, but only to be positive and think what we can do and take this opportunity towards. Right. So, Sunil, what's the view that you hold right now overall? Because currently it's economies that have been impacted across the globe. What is it that we as a country need to do to fight this pandemic, not only on the healthcare side, but even if you have to look from the economic perspective? I think this is a time again to reboot the country on the economy side. Is very critical because if you see in the last, the way I assess, I assess from 90 to 1990 till uh, 2020. 1990 to 2010-11 was one journey and from 2011 till now it's been a different journey. And the last, more particularly that 9 to 10 years, almost uh, last decade, has been wiped out in just terms of the mess we have created ourselves in the economy. And I think this is a very good time. I think we are blessed that this has happened where if we wake up, but I think uh, presently during this pandemic, we are in the middle of the storm. So presently everything is in a standstill mode. There is nothing moving. It is only after the storm is over that you can assess the damage which has been done and what could be the way forward. But I think uh, it is a time when the government and the businesses have to reboot itself. Look at what is there on the ground once the uh, lockdown is over, once things get into a little bit of a uh, uh, movement, uh, then see how to build it from where it has been left. And I think this is where the governments will have to play a very, very important role, which we see in many of the countries the governments are doing. Same way in India, uh, the government will have to play a driving role to make uh, the economy start to kick uh, going forward. And this is where my thoughts, uh, simply put, would be that government would need to do uh, social uh, programs to support the lowest uh, strata of the people, along with the support of the private sector. Because private sector, through its CSR, through its uh, benevolence, which is there, can support their ecosystem in supporting the uh, lowest strata of the society, plus coupled with the government this. On the second part, on the economy side, what is required by the government will be a major push into infrastructure spending going forward, whether it is the central government, state government or the local government. That is the only way you can kickstart the economy in terms of allowing the distribution of wealth because activity, economic activity will start with that. 
uh, money flow will happen even if the government would have to print money for it for both infra and social they would need to do that that is only because india does not have much of capital in the private hands right so so sunil what is the difficulty that you as a business are facing and what is the impact on business that you are expecting see i think unless today the entire blood flow of economy is the financial system the financial system virtually will get choked it has got choked and it will be further choked it was happening for the last couple of years uh, since we brought in these definition of the non performing assets the asset quality review non performing assets see we need to understand that how india has evolved i am not saying or not against many of these uh, things that you don't you should not be transparent you must be transparent you must be uh, open but you need to also see what are your challenges today the rules and regulations in the last 10 years which has come into india in all the uh, aspects of the system whether it is the laws whether it is all the uh, regulators which are there uh, they have become so throttling that they have lost out its practicalness it is it is lost out that what can be practically achieved what cannot be practically achieved, what level of uh, state india is in india is not a 30 year old uh, adult india is still a baby it is growing and in a developing stage if you bring in rules and regulations which are brought which were there in the most developed world uh, it will be a mismatch it's like a child if your child you have a 10 year child and if you have a 25 year you will not behave the same way you will not have the same rules to both of them unfortunately our regulators over the last more particularly 10 years has really throttled the entire system and we need to break this and i believe that this is a right time to reboot ourselves the government to realize that we have put in so much of strangle hold into the entire system of the economy and the business that needs to be unleashed then only the entrepreneurship will evolve we may talk about startup india we may talk about lot of but unless you create that ecosystem you have to support the small but you also have to support the big only the small will not support because if we talk only about the sme who does the sme supply to sme supplies to the big ones if the big ones don't survive how will you how much will you give only to the sme say for example if at the lowest strata of people you just keep doling money to them but you don't give employment opportunities if wealth is not created what will happen it will not be sustainable right. so i think uh, what is important for for the authorities and the government to realize that last 10 years we have damaged the indian ecosystem and the economy massively this is a time to reboot ourselves change our rules change our regulations first simple thing which they need to do and the rbi need to do they should have done it a month back they say that uh, uh, all the restructuring you allow one time restructuring of all loans whether to individual or whether to enterprises based on the potential future cash flow and the asset value not the past the past is gone if today what happens when businesses look at like we also being in the finance business when we look at our customer i can't judge him from the past because past is no there past is all gone how do i judge assess make an assessment based on the past i have to make an assessment for the future and then we work the cash flow so that allowance is a must giving this uh, 90 day moratorium etc will not serve the purpose this is the most stupid i would say uh, un, uh, without any thinking this has been done this has have no meaning this is not benefit the system this is not help if you just change your definition of npa allow one time restructuring whether it is a bond holder with a bond in, uh, investor or, or a uh, bank loans all that needs to be get corrected right so so sunil if you could just help me understand for shri infra as a company what's the kind of impact that we are expected to see in the current year if you have to talk from a business perspective are we expecting the asset quality to worsen are we expecting an impact on the aum as well if yes what's the kind of quantum that we could be looking at well as i said we are in the middle of the storm the quantification would happen post the storm is over it will be very uh, difficult for me to say anything but yes if the ecosystem does not support uh, one very clearly we have to reboot ourselves we were already in that journey for some time to reboot ourselves we had uh, 
already said that we'll exit all our infra project financing. We are not going to do that because we knew that that is the way the regulation in the country had evolved, the way the ecosystem evolved. It was no more for the private sector to play that role. It is for the government to play that role. We realized it. We realized it a little late. We did not know till 2010 when we were investing in infra that this is what is going to happen. The rules suddenly will change. So therefore, we had realized and we are exiting that. Today, that exit will also not be possible. So we don't know what is going to happen. Uh, the rules which uh, came out recently from the RBI that I have to give moratorium to my customers for next three months. But I have no moratorium for my lenders. So my cash flow is only from my customers, nothing else. I don't manufacture anything. So if that doesn't happen, how am I going to pay my liabilities? Today Excel, in the papers, I read an article that the RBI feels that there is no problem in the NBFC sector. Mm -hmm. Good, if there is no problem. Uh, good wishes to everyone. But from me, from my perspective, it defies rationality or logic. That if you have stopped uh, your customers, uh, you have given a moratorium. How? Uh, it will sustain. There is no way you can sustain it. Yes, people may have some surplus cash for some time. So, uh, we have uh, certain immunity, so we can withstand for some time, that's it. But that's, this that's model has changed. So, 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 do you think, so, do you think for individuals who are actually surviving on their EMIs right now, I mean, the ones who've got a moratorium in terms of the EMI, instead of actually giving them a moratorium for two, three months, rather a waiver is something which is actually needed across? No, I have never said waiver. Mm. I have always said realignment. You see, in a society, what happens? If you look at the financial system, there are savers who put money in the banking system and they are long term. On an overall basis, if you see, they are long term. They would want to keep on putting money and earn certain return on that. Mm -hmm. Then you have uh, borrowers. Borrowers can be individuals, borrowers can be uh, businesses, enterprises. So both those two will be the borrowers in the system to be able to do certain economic activity or for consumption or for a certain consumer delivery if it is an individual who is doing this. So if that is only elongated, it's not that the world is coming to an end. You are only saying that fine, you were initially given a payment structure of a 3 year or a 5 year or a 10 year. Now it will be say for 11 years, say for 12 years. So how does that matter? On the liability side, your depositors are basically interested into getting a return and the money saved. So if an asset has a particular life, yes, there may be scenarios. Some of the business and enterprises may have lost its viability. There you need to take your correction and post measure, which is why I said that the restructuring based on the future cash flow, which uh, will evolve post this pandemic. Then right. we, and have you also as a business given the moratorium, passed on the moratorium to your customers and the financing side? Well, uh, we, uh, the, uh, the RBI has made it ma uh, mandatory for us. So we are supporting and also more so uh, in the, my last 30 years, what we have always seen is if I don't support my customer in a difficult time, then it's not fair from uh, our side. So we will try our best. We have our own challenges, but we'll try our best, understand the customer. It's not a blanket monitoring we will give. But we are taking care on a case by case, wherever support is required uh, with a humane face, uh, we work on with the customer and find solutions to them. And that's what we have done for the last 30 years. I remember in the 90s, we never had these guidelines of NPA and all. But still we were doing to support our client. We never used to keep our client. Correct. Correct. And very lastly, Sunil, my last question is because you are in the business somewhere of equipment financing as well, so you do understand the plight that comes in from the farmer sector of the society, uh, this migrant community as well, because a lot of their families are, uh, you know, uh, farmers. Is the stress a lot at that level right now? Absolutely. I think the stress at the ground level is unimaginable. I think our regulators, our uh, uh, senior, they are not able to imagine because I feel that there could be a lot of uh, social unrest in mm -hmm. politics. They would be a lot of, because you see now information, what has changed in the last 30 years is information is available at the groundless level. Aspirations have risen. And then when that aspirations come down at people at the lower level, uh, there that uh, uh, capacity uh, to withstand is limited. 
Correct. Therefore, they uh, they blow up. The younger generation has, and we have a huge younger generation. So they have a lot of fire in them. That inferno will erupt uh, if it is not taken care of uh, very fast. And that is why I believe that it is very important for the economy, for the country to look at its resources, see how fast, not break down with our, uh, not get stuck with our rules and regulations. Unleash our rules and regulations, which is throttling us. You will find a new India will emerge. Right, a new India will emerge. I think that's everyone's. Hope at the moment as well. Thank you, Sunil, for joining us on the show and getting us a perspective of what happens with the infrastructure.